What's up, this is Frank Carter from the Rattlesnakes, and you're listening to Louder. So I am with Frank Carter, uh, Frank Carter and the Rattlesnakes. And to be honest, every time I'm talking to an artist, I'm between excited and uh, just happy to talk to them, but with you I'm kind of scared. Huh. Okay? Okay. Um, with um, the EP called Rot, and oh, then yeah. uh, the album has a song called I Hate. Yeah, I hate um, you, And yeah. the t-shirts, and everything is about death and kind of anger, and I think you've punched yourself in the face in the launch, uh, the launch show? Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's not all about, uh, I mean, it is about death, you know, but it's about, um, it's about understanding that, and it's about, um, you know, being the frustration of, of that, of losing someone close to you, you know, so it's not really like a comical, like, oh, I'm super angry, it's just that I am, like, I was genuinely really upset, you know, I was very angry, um, and I was trying to compartmentalize that that hatred and that frustration and the anger that I felt at losing someone that you know I really cared about and also you know about losing my career in music and and what and my career in tattooing you know everything that I had worked towards uh, building in my adult life I felt like I I I was watching just fall apart in in 2014 so that's why you know that's why the album is about that you know um, the EP was called Rotten because it's it's you know it's about um, it's about that feeling I had at the end of the year where I was just toxic and I had sort of eaten myself and decomposing, and that's why the album is called Blossom, you know, because actually ultimately it's it's about the overcoming of that, it's about the celebration, it's about the circle of life, you know. I had lost a lot that year, and then my daughter was born, so ultimately, like, it's a good thing, you know. Okay, Nothing so, to be scared of. Yeah, okay, that's what I want to know. Yeah. But just in case, we're going to play some sort of a game that uh, we're going to call I Hate, and you're going to agree or disagree. Okay, so I'm going to give you some things, and you're going to tell me whether you hate them or not. Okay? You ready? I hate this game. <laughs> How about that? Okay. <laughs> um, can we do just a few? If you want, yeah, sure. Okay. You want to talk about the album, or you want to, you want to do something else? Like, go on, let's play your game then. <laughs> let's play your okay, game. This is going well. Um, okay, politicians? I feel, uh, you know, they're a necessary evil. I mean, like, there are some great ones and there are some equally bad ones, but you can say that about a lot of things. Okay, so, life? I love life. Death? I, I equally love death as well. I'm confused by it, but um, I'm not scared of it. Okay, British weather? I love it. Okay, videos of cats? I love them. Um, poopy diapers? Uh, I love them because, you know, it's just another reminder that I have a daughter. I'm a very lucky man. Okay. Um, the film Frozen? I've not seen it, but I'm sure I love it. <laughs> okay, Magic Mike? Magic Mike, I've never seen that either, but my wife's dying to, so I'm sure I'll enjoy that as well. Okay. Raindrop on Roses? Yeah, I mean, where are you going with this? Okay. Um, it was from uh, the... Yeah, I know where it's from. <laughs> yeah. Okay, um, so... After having a few bands, you got your name on the group's name. So mm. is it more of a solo project? No, not really. I mean, it's you know, it's definitely about finding out who I am as an artist, you know. Um, but it's not a solo project. Um, I mean, <clears throat> in my old bands, like I, I felt a lot that the focus was on me always in those bands. But I was always able to hide behind a band name. Um, so this time around, I wanted to make it clear that this is, you know, it is very much my band, but I'm sharing it with, with some very good friends of mine that I trust, who I think are amazing musicians and great songwriters. Um, obviously, the band is really Dean and I. He's the sort of the kingpin. He's helping me write the songs. Um, and then on drums is Memby Jago, uh, who I've known for a long, long time. And on bass guitar is Thomas Michener, who again I've known for a long time. He actually recorded the album. He produced it. So. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, it's not um, it's not it's not a, a solo project of sorts, but it's also but it is my band, you know. Okay. And you went very independent. You have your own label. 
and as you mentioned, Thomas was the producer, mm. and you did the artwork as well. Yeah, actually, um, just hand painted. Yeah, a hundred of them. Well, yeah, I've done sixty, so I've still got a few more to go. But okay. I've, um, but things got a bit busier than I thought they were going to get, so we had to take them off sale. But November, we've got some time off. So after we finish this tour, then we're going to have a little bit of time off, and then I get back in the studio, paint some more. So yeah, looking forward to it. So with Pure Love, it looks like you were a bit more emotional and now you're angry again? Um, no, I don't, I completely disagree. Um, I mean, Pure Love, like, if you've, if you've heard the album, um, I wouldn't say it was an emotional record at all. Like, there was, there was a couple of tracks there. If anything, this, this record is definitely more emotional than the Pure Love record. Uh, the Pure Love record was just a celebration of rock music. You know, it was just about... Um, about celebrating the time I had while I was living in New York and um, again just like fun fun party rock and roll songs with my friend but this this record is definitely more emotional than that than that band ever was um, and I mean you know anger is 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 uh, is subjective do you know what I mean like I'm not a particularly angry man um, you know I, I, I would like to think that I can channel it into certain ways I mean you, you look at you watch any hardcore band the front man is going to look angry you know it's an aggressive music but I would call this record violent or aggressive more than angry because actually it's a celebration ultimately it is like it's about it's about understanding trying to understand if anything it's a frustrated record more than it's an angry record so. and how do you turn from this calm person in front of me to the crazy machine that's going to go on stage in a bit um I don't know. I guess I just get asked loads of questions that I hate, and then I no, I'm just playing. With you now. Um, no, it's just a, it's just something that you've got. You've either got it or you don't, you know. And I definitely, I definitely go into my own place before we play, you know. And and I put myself in in a bit of a place, and and also like when you feel you. Feel you know, music is is an, is an emotive thing. It's a it's a physical thing, a spiritual thing. And when I hear the first chords, that puts me immediately in a mindset. And that mindset is to, you know, I I, I, I hear the lyrics, I read them in my head, and then I'm immediately transported to where I was when I wrote them. And I go and just deliver, you know, the, the song the only way I know how, which is um, with with all the passion and intensity that my body will allow at that time you know it's got to be a hundred percent because people have come to see it you know and, and that's what they deserve they deserve if i walk off stage and and i've not left every single ounce of me there then i'm doing a bad job you know you feel more exposed when you do that no not necessarily i mean i, I feel um feel happy on one hand you sold sold out most of the the dates on this tour yeah if not all of them on the other hand, you're doing small shows. Is it something that you prefer? Is it some sort of an elephant in a china shop uh, syndrome? Just to break everything around? No, I don't like breaking anything. I mean, I like, I, like the, I like the chaos of a small show. You know, I grew up going to small shows. But this, compared to the shows that I would go to as a kid, is, is big. You know, there's every show, pretty much every show on this tour is like 300 capacity. Yeah, they're not like the, the thousand cap rooms of the O2 Academies yet. But the band has only been a band for not even a year you know we started this band in February so um, we haven't had a chance to gain that many fans yet but we are and and we will by next year like we'll have we'll probably fill those rooms and we'll move up and we'll play those rooms but it's a case of like you know while the band is in its infancy I get a lot more control than people would want to give me and so when I have that control I want to do with it what I want, which is I want to play the smallest room I can with no barrier so that I can be at one with, with the fans and we can all come together in this celebration, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to be put on a pedestal, I'm not anyone, I shouldn't be an idol, do you know what I mean, I'm just a human being like you, like anybody else that comes to the show, um, I want to experience it with them the way they do because that, that's what is exciting to me you know I remember going to shows and being excited and seeing people on stage and, and when they came down it, it made a big impression on me so are you still doing the, the floor shows yeah every night pretty much so I mean, every where, night you just where we can like obviously the show is sold out there's probably not enough room to do a floor show you know but um, but you know when when it calls for it yeah like I, I mean I I 
play from the from the crowd as much as I can because I just enjoy it down there. Okay. So, um, what do you want to be remembered for once you're old and uh, I don't know. Um, um, hopefully that I was just a good person, good husband, good father, and um, and that I tried my hardest. Okay. One final question. Um, there's always kind of the uh, the collide between being a rough. A rocker and being a, a dad. Um, so, what music puts your, your one-year-old daughter to sleep? Uh, the Beatles. Yeah, Blackbird. Um, I sing that to her pretty much every night before she goes to bed. And, and um, yeah, Blackbird or um, David Bowie. Does she mosh already? She's ten months old, mate. Okay. Of course she can mosh.